Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, and this is the Texan S2000. What is it? Transistor radio, communications receiver? It's everything, really. Now, from what I've read on the internet, most people buy these for shortwave, shortwave listening. You've got upper sideband, lower sideband, AM, of course. Uh, the entire shortwave band up to, what, 30 megs. Long and medium, long wave is what, 100 kcs to I think 550 kilohertz, shouldn't say kc, should I show my age, uh, medium wave 550 to 17 something, then short wave 17 up to 30 megs, 17, 1.7 megs up to 30 megs. Aircraft band, which is good, and also VHF FM band 2, uh, which is stereo. Now, it's only got one speaker, so you're going to say, well, how is it stereo? You've got an earphone socket, so it's stereo through the headphones. Now, the thing is, to be honest, anyone buying something like this, you're not buying it for hi-fi stereo FM reception. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. You're buying it for shortwave and possibly the air band. I mean, the aircraft band is not something I listen to, really. It's, it's interesting, I suppose. Um, I want this. I mean, I bought this second hand. New, they're about £300 or more which initially I thought, wow, well, that's a lot for a transistor radio. But of course, it's not a transistor radio. Well, it is, but it isn't. Uh, for long and medium wave, rotatable ferrite rod aerial on there, which again is quite useful, I suppose, you know, if you've got it on a shelf in that position and your station's over there, you can just do that you know, for, to peak up on the S meter uh, on long and medium wave quite useful again for um, non-directional beacons uh, you know down well where are they so less between sort of 300 and 500 kilohertz aren't they somewhere around there we've got Shoreham on 332 kilohertz Shoreham uh, airport which is a few miles that way you can use batteries or plug in a six volt power supply there um, what I do like, just unplug that, just put that down for a minute. The, the telescopic aerial is amazing. What I do like here, you've got a switch, internal or external aerial. Then you've got FM aerial, right, for the, the band 2 VHF FM. Then a BNC socket and a 50 ohm shortwave antenna socket. And then a high impedance uh, earth and wire socket for so if you want to use a random length of wire so you've got a really good selection of aerials all, all connected to the side there i've got um the mini whip antenna which i use for long medium and short wave that comes in there on the bnc plug so that just goes on there then you switch to external antenna so that's fantastic aerial wise um i've, I've made a couple of video clips of the radio working not much around on the aircraft band at the moment. It's, uh, where are we? Very early Sunday morning. So there aren't that many aircraft about. This is the aircraft band. Squelch control there. So there it is. RF gain. Um, I've got it on 126825. 126 decimal 825, which is Gatwick approach. Gatwick's only, what, 40 miles up the road from me, if that... A um, bit quiet at the moment. The tuning is rather nice because, I don't know whether you can see, there are two little arrows there. That's coarse tuning. So it goes in 25, look, you see, 25, 50, 75, 9. OK, it's 825 we want. If you press the little button there, you've got one arrow. It's then... There we are, you see the tuning changing, 27, 8, 7, 6, 5. So it's really nice tuning. And it is very sensitive on the aircraft band. I'm only using its own telescopic aerial at the moment. Sorry about the reflection here, it's all the lighting in here. It's on its own telescopic aerial. I do have a an airband aerial up in the loft. But of course, bear in mind with aircraft stuff, it's, you know, the planes are up in the air, obviously, well, hopefully. <laughs> so, you know, you don't need a, a massive aerial up on the chimney or anything like that. 
unless you want to hear the airport itself. I mean, I can't hear Gatwick from here. I can't hear Shoreham, Shoreham uh, Control Tower. Well, I can hear it on my on my main aerial, but um, it's very quiet at the moment. I can't hear Shoreham on the telescopic aerial because I've been over there to the airport. Their aerial is only about 40, 40 feet above the ground. So you know, they're not transmitting to another ground station. They're transmitting to aircraft, which, as I say, are hopefully up in the air. <laughs> I'll uh, try and find some aircraft a bit later. Normally Shoreham, I think the airport opens at seven in the morning. And if it's a sunny day, which it isn't today, uh, hundreds of thousands of small aircraft, well, not that many, quite a lot come out of Shoreham. They all fly over here where I am. And of course, it, it's really busy on the aircraft band. I do suffer from a lot of interference here. Uh, there are switch mode power supplies in various places. You know, I'm surrounded. I'm, I'm not far from the centre of town, to be honest. So anything that's going on, I pick it up. <laughs> um, that's my amateur radio stuff over there. Ignore that for a minute. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more of, on the broadcast bands in a second. You've got things like sleep timer and all that business, that snooze and stuff. I'm not going to show you all that. I'm not. This isn't a review of the radio. I'm not doing a review. I'm just showing you what I've got and uh, what I think of it, which I suppose is a kind of review, isn't it? It's a great radio. I did say that it's... Um, it's look, you've got line out. I forgot to mention that. Line out left and right. Uh, phono. They're called RCA, aren't they? Well, we always call those phono sockets RCA. So if you do want to stick this through a decent stereo amp and a couple of big speakers, then you've got good quality stereo FM. So that is uh, that is good. It's nice having the line out. And there, what is that? No, that's, my, that's the local repeater. There's a line in. I don't know why you'd want line in. Would you want line in? I don't know, you might do. I might have to turn that off in a minute, that repeater. Uh, so yes, you've got um, wide and narrow bandwidth. Uh, F, there's an FM stereo button there. So if you're using a you know, separate amp, you've got that. You've got, uh, oh, where are we? Aircraft, shortwave, medium wave, long wave, FM. There's memories. I, I haven't worked out how to use the memories yet. I'm not really bothered about that. Uh, up and down buttons, RF gain, BFO for SSB, squelch, which is really useful, of course, on the aircraft band. Loads of stuff. You've got a, a keypad here. You can dial in your own frequencies and stuff. So, yeah, it's quite a, an amazing radio. I'll show you the next clip, which is on the broadcast band. Sorry about the, the interference. I, I don't know where it's coming from, actually. I've tried to track it down. Anyway, that's another issue. Have a look at the video clip. That's a shortwave station, 13635. This is the outside aerial, the mini whip active antenna I'm using at the moment. There we are, that's uh, 15150, 15.15 megs. It's early morning, so there aren't a lot of shortwave stations around on the lower frequency bands. That's the 19 metre band. So it's really good on broadcast stations, really sensitive on broadcast stations. At night, just on its telescopic aerial, it's fantastic. Just everywhere is just packed with radio stations. It's amazing. Give you a quick demo now on a couple of amateur bands. Oh, was it 20 metres, 40 metres? Uh, sideband. Um, as I say, I've got a lot of interference here, but uh, have a look at the video clip anyway. It's not, not bad, actually. The interference sometimes just wipes everything out. At the moment, it's not too horrendous. Uh, good afternoon from Finland. And thank you very much for the back That's a station from Finland. The little control down there. As the BFO. That's the BFO down there, or clarifier if you like. This is the 40 meter amateur band. Five nine plus twenty into the Orkney Islands. Uh, the name is yes, USO. Orkney Islands. Seven point one two eight megs. 
40 meter amateur band lower side band that again is on the active antenna the mini whip Okay, uh, David, very good. Well, thanks for all the information there, there well. and uh, good morning to anybody who's within earshot of the, uh, the station. Lovely signal coming in there from uh, Bristol. Uh, the call sign is Golf Mike 8, Oscar Foxtrot, Quebec. We're on the island of Hoy in the Orkney Islands. Uh, that's, uh... So you can see how well that works, uh, especially on sideband. When I mentioned the price earlier, £300, I think I've seen them for more than that, brand new. I don't know how old this is, actually. Um, it's difficult. I, I'm out of touch with prices, so I don't know. Is that a good price? I've seen people on various forums on the internet saying, you know, it's a great, great deal that you get for your money. It's really good price, so perhaps it is. I don't know. I've got a, a HF, a low HF 150 receiver here. And I use also, for receiving only, a Kenwood HF transceiver, TS570D. I use that in a second hand. These are about 400. Uh, so it depends what you want. If you want VHF FM stereo, all right, and the aircraft band and shortwave, then go for that. If you want a serious communications receiver, well, long, medium and shortwave, I'd go for that. OK, it's a transmitter as well. Well, I just don't plug the mic in. I've got another one of these, the other side of the room, uh, which is where all my amateur radio stuff is. So that one I do use for transmitting. This one um, I've just used for receiving. It's really nice. Again, it's got all the memories and, and it, well, it's got more than this in the way of a, a shortwave receiver because you've got IF shift um there's all sorts on there the cw filters things like that you might not want all that if you're not listening to morse code then you might not want cw filters uh noise reduction various things like that so it you know, what do you want i mean this for example you, you might think well why did i buy this i bought it well it's a good price to start with i bought this because when uh, we often go to the isle of wight um couple of times a year we'll go for a week so a couple of weeks a year we go to the Isle of Wight which is really nice I take amateur radio gear with me in the car but this I thought this would be useful because we stay near Benbridge Airport so I can listen to the airplanes if you want. am I a nerd yes if you want to listen to that would please my wife say oh look we're listening to Benbridge Airport dear. yes are we but it's got shortwave so I can have a tune around at shortwave at night have a tune around the bands during the day if we're you know when we're back at the chalet place we can just have vhf fm radio listen to uh, isle of white radio which is a good station so it's got kind of everything aircraft benbridge airport shortwave at night vhf fm during the day i mean i wouldn't want to take the kenwood with me because you need a you know, big 12 volt power supply and the rest of it with this battery operator, we can also take it down the beach. Not that we want to take it down the beach. S meter is useful. I like the S meter. It's the old fashioned style. A, a analog. Oh, how nice it is to see an analog S meter instead of all these bar graph things. I don't know. I like that. I like the old fashioned stuff. Volume, treble and bass. Uh, what else can I tell you about? That's it, really. That's it. It's a brilliant radio. But as I said, if you want serious shortwave communications receiver, I've always said to people, go something like a transceiver. Go for something like that. Because the receivers on them are normally pretty good and the second-hand price is pretty good. And you can always pirate if you haven't got a license. Oh, no, I must edit that bit out. Did I say pirate? Good grief. Stone the crows. So there we are. Oh, and the clock. Look, it's now 12.17. I went and had coffee and... Did a bit in the garden so that's why it's now no longer very early sunday morning 12 17. i'll see just before i go i'll see whether i can find some aircraft for you that's funny the aircraft band's pretty quiet today i don't know why they fly out of Gatwick on Sundays, don't they? And Heathrow and stuff. Don't know, probably just miss them. 
Um, but there we are. I, as I said, I'm not that interested in the aircraft band. I wanted this for HF. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. The look at the Texan S2000. I think there's a Grundig. Is it 750? You'll know because you'll probably look it all up and stuff. A Grundig. Is it 750? Which is the same or more or less the same. I suppose what it is, is a Chinese radio and then people will stick their own logo on it, your know, Grundig, Texan, whatever. I don't know. Don't quote me on that because it's probably not true. Uh, the only thing I would say is the four, are they D-cell? You know, the big fat batteries. They used to be called D-cells. They've changed all the names now. It's confusing. Um, the round fat torch batteries, it takes four. I bought four Duracell ones, uh, eight pound something. And I thought, that's a lot of money. It's a shame they're not rechargeable. What The only thing that I think lets the radio down is if you could fit rechargeable batteries, then when you're running it from you know the mains power supply, it's charging the internal batteries. That would be great, but it doesn't. I suppose you could buy rechargeable batteries, take them out and charge them, but a bit of a palaver. Anyway, there we are. That's it. I'm quite pleased with it. As I say, I got it for an extremely good price. When I take it to the Isle of Wight, I'll do a video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. I'm not that. I don't know. I might do. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I shall see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye for now.